Hey, welcome again to Discovery Church. Let me look at this camera. Welcome all of our Discovery Online family, our outdoor courtyard, and joining us live, Discovery Northwest. Make some noise if you're excited to be in God's house today. Yeah. I'm excited to begin this series, but before I do jump in, let me just celebrate, man. We had over 5,000 people attend an Easter at Discovery experience over all of our campuses and venues. It was, a, it was phenomenal. There was 372 decisions to um, receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior as well, which is, I think, a record for us. And that's just not people like raising their hand and stuff. That's like people writing down a card saying, this is me and I've made a decision. Now I'm so excited to take you on a journey now of life change and transformation. I don't know if you realize this, but today, because you're here, you're joining a four-week detox program. No, just kidding. So this is what we're doing, okay? This is where we're going today, man, because there's some things inside of us. I just don't think we realize that it got there or even how it got there. So, so God's going to reveal some things in this toxic series I think that you're going to be healthier and better, better for it. Let me, guys, let me give you a definition, a few definitions of toxic. This is what toxic means. Some of you kind of uh, relate to this or not relate to it, but you understand this definition. Containing or being poisonous material, especially when capable of causing death or serious debilitation. This could be something that you're actually ingesting. Now, that's not the folk. Like, we're going to talk about some things that are toxic that you can ingest in you. But it's much bigger than that because there's some toxic things that are affecting the other parts of who you are. Another definition of toxic is something causing you a lot of harm or unhappiness over a long period of time. So this is much broader because the Bible says, I don't know if you know this, but the Bible says that you were created a triune being. Just as God is triune, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you were created triune. And every one of those areas are important to be walking in health and wholeness. Let me show you one of the verses in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. It says, now may God himself, the God of peace, make you pure. So there's, every now and then, there's some impurities that can come inside and, and contaminate and mess with us. So we need to constantly be re-purifying ourselves. And he says, let him make you pure, pure belonging to him. And I love this. He says, make your whole self. Sometimes we get so focused on one aspect of health or our life, and we get so focused in not understanding that there's a whole self. Do you know God is interested in your whole self, okay? Here's what the whole self is. Your whole self, he says, spirit, soul, and body. The three parts of who you are, spirit, soul, and body, be kept safe and without fault when our Lord Jesus Christ comes. Now, every one of those parts, spirit, soul, and body, they are connected to the whole self, meaning this. If one of the parts of who you are, spirit, soul, or body, are infected, then it will affect the other parts of who you are. So if your body is breaking down, it ain't going to just stay. Your, emo your soul and your spirit will be affected by the lack of health in your body, okay? So, so let me kind of break this down for you, okay? What is each one of these domains of the whole self, how God created us? The spirit is the deepest part of a person. It's actually the most important part of who you are because it's the part of you that lasts forever. It's the eternal part of you. It's the part of you that can connect and make contact actually with God in the spirit realm. That's your spirit, man. Human beings are the only creatures in all creation that were created with a spirit man, a spirit being. All other aspects and created beings do not have this spirit that can connect, that can actually contact in the spirit realm our heavenly father. So this is the inner part. It is, by the way, supposed to be, those of you who are children of God, it's supposed to be the strongest part of who you are, the dominating part of who you are that brings the other parts of who you are into submission, okay? But there is these other parts of you. The second part, he says, is the soul. Well, what's the soul? The soul is the mental or the psychological, the emotional part of a person. Now, this is where some people, I've heard them say like, oh, I don't believe in that psychobabble, mental health, baloney. God does. God created you with a psychology, with an emotional capacity, with mental capacity. And he cares about your whole health and your whole self. So you should start caring about your mental health your emotional health. Because what happens when you're not 
Here's what happens. Here's how it looks like. When your spirit man is not in charge and is not, is not as strong and you neglect the soul, you, you neglect mental and emotional health, what happens is your thinking and your feeling starts to override your spirit and contradict your spirit. So the Bible says in, 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 the, in 1 Timothy, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and sound mind. So what happened there was I had a feeling that was fear. I started thinking afraid, and my spirit wasn't strong enough to bring that into subjection. So my soul took over my spirit, and now I have a spirit of fear. It has infected my spirit. Now that doesn't mean there's a fear ghost that way. That's not what that means, okay? In my spirit, I have a, I have a loud fear to infect to poison because my soul was calling the shots and not my spirit, okay? We, we just read, read last week on Easter um, in Isaiah chapter 61 that, that's, that prophecy that Jesus, Jesus spoke and he, he read from in that scroll to put on the, the garment of praise for the spirit of despair that you can, actually, you can actually, in the middle of your despair and your depression, you can put on something else if your spirit's in charge. That in your soul and your emotions, you can feel depressed and put and feel despair, but you can, if your spirit is calling the shot, say, I'm not listening to you. I'm going to put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Okay? So, so David did this. He spoke to his soul. He said, he said why are you downcast, oh my soul? Put your hope in God. Okay? So sometimes you got to put your soul in check. Now, some of you don't know how to do that, okay? And some of you, it's, it's the spirit, man, that you need to, you need to feed a, a little bit and put the soul in check because it's a, sometimes it'll override. And then the third part of who you are is the body, the body, which is kind of, it's what everybody sees, right? It's the external, tangible part of a person, okay? For far too many people, when you think of detox, some of the toxic, de- you think of the body. It's the body going through this detox experience, but, but I have found that there are toxins, and even biblically, there is, you can have a toxic spirit. You can get a toxic spirit. You can get a toxic soul. You can have the toxic body and toxic habits. You, you can be around and, and be in relationship and around toxic people. So here's, for the next four weeks, here's what we're going to do. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover the different, I'm gonna, each week, I'm going to cover a different aspect of, of how we can be infected and, and, and and poisoned by these toxic, we're going to talk about the toxic spirit, toxic soul, our, our toxic habits and body, and even in our relationships and toxic people. How do we deal with toxic people in our, in our life? What does the Bible have to say about that? And my challenge to you in this series is like, I'm going to preach on it. I'm going to teach on it on, on Sunday, and then I want you to detox that, that part of who you are for the next six days, Okay. So, so for the next six days, we're going to walk that out, and I'm going to give you one at a time, and we're going to go through detox together. Amen, you guys? We're all, breathe. It's okay. It's going to be okay. It's going to be, I'm, I promise you, you go on this journey with me. Let, let me take you on a journey of healing and health and restoration, and I promise you, by the end of this thing, you're going to feel so much happier and healthier than you ever have been before, okay? Once you start taking care of the whole self. Let, let, if you have your Bibles or sermon notes, let's take a look at this 2 Corinthians chapter 6 passage, and we're going to continue all the way to chapter 7, verse 1. Then we're going to go to Romans chapter 8. So if you have your Bibles, you can bookmark that or something. We're going to go there in just a moment. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, starting at verse 14. It's a very interesting passage of Scripture because the Apostle Paul is writing this passage, this book, to Christians at at, in a city called Corinth. And so he's talking to church people. And he goes, hey, church guys, hey, Christians, be careful that you don't be yoked together. That's a Bible word that we don't use a lot right now, like in our terminology, yoked. And, and in the original language that your New Testament was written in Greek, all it means is common fellowship. It means to have common fellowship or to have closeness of fellowship. So obviously we can't get away from everything that's toxic in this world. You cannot disconnect entirely from all worldly things that's that's like impossible but we, we you have to be careful with the level of closeness that you are with those things like like so paul says don't get too close to the world with or with unbelievers and then he asks some questions he goes for what do righteousness and wickedness have in common none obviously right or what fellowship can light have with darkness what harmony between christ and belial and that's just another name for a demon or the devil what does a believer have in common with, a, with an unbeliever? What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of, and I love this, the living God. Let me say it this way. Church buildings aren't sanctuaries. 
You are the sanctuary. Which is why no matter if you gather at Discovery Church Southwest or Centennial High School Northwest, the only reason why this place is holy is because the kingdom of the citizens of God have gathered here to worship him. Can I get an amen, you guys? God does not want to fill buildings. He wants to fill you. You are the temple of the living God. Because the next verse, he says, as God said, and then there's a colon, and he's about to quote an Old Testament passage, that God, a quoting God that he made in the Old Testament. Watch this. God wants to live with them and walk among you. God wants to dwell in you. You're his temple. And I will be their God, and they will be my people. And then he says, here's how, how I'm going to do it. You got to come out from them and be separate. In other words, God is saying, I really want to have this intensity of my presence in your life. I want to fill you. I want you to be my temple. But in order to have this, you got to come out from some of these things. You got to get away from the things that you're yoking yourself to. So there has to be a process where, where you're analyzing what got in there that should have been in there in the first place. And that's the question of the day today. What's in your life? That's not, it's not jeopardizing your eternity, maybe. You're going to heaven because you gave, you gave your life to Jesus, man. Your sins are forgiven, past, present, and future. Praise God for that. But the level of activity, power, anointing, and glory that you carry in your life is determined by the level of closeness you have with him and the proximity that you are from the world. Amen. Come on, God. I'm going to amen myself. Northwest, will you amen me real quick? Because I need some love up in here. Come out from them and be separate, says the Lord. Watch this. Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Now check this out. Next chapter, chapter 7, verse 1, but continuing the same thought. Since we have these promises... What promise is he talking about? That if we separate ourselves, if we come out from that separate, that God would come in and bring glory. Since we have them, look at this. Let us purify ourselves. Notice that God doesn't do the purifying here. It's you. When you got saved, God did all of it. He cleansed your spirit, man. He, he washed you and made you clean. You're going to heaven. But now we're in the process to how close we can get to God and how separate we can get from the things of this world. And that mathematical equation, if you will, is determining the level of activity God has in your life. So it happens to all of us. It happens to me. The Bible says that we all just need this process of purifying ourselves. From what? Let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates, he says. And that's what we got to do. For the next four messages here, we're going to look at the toxins that are contaminating body and spirit, he says, so that we can perfect holiness out of reverence for God. Now, when you think about a toxic spirit, I'm not saying like you're an awful person or anything like that, because um, what we're going to talk about today is, is, is uh, you're, you're, not, you're not an awful person. It's just sometimes some things can get inside of us that we never even intended in the first place. So today's, the topic today is, a toxic spirit. We're going to focus on how did we get that spirit? How, do, how did it get poisoned? Where did it, where did it shift away? Because it says in Psalm 51 verse 10, look at this. This is King David saying, create in me a pure heart. God, make my spirit right again. Because I got off track. My spirit, man, got off, man. Some things got in there that shouldn't have been in there. I need your help, God, to get me back on, on track. You say, Pastor Jason, how do you know that I need this, that I've got like some things in there that shouldn't be in there in my spirit? Let's look at this. Here's the symptom. In Psalm chapter 13, verse 2, you are a candidate today for a spirit detox if this is describing you. Look what it says. How long must I wrestle with my thoughts? So if you've ever, listen, time out right there. If, you've, if you're in a wrestling match today, in your thoughts, if you're in a wrestling match with, man, I really want to do this, but I, I keep doing this. I should do that, but that's not what I'm doing. I keep on doing this, and man, I, did, I don't like saying that, and I always say it, and I don't like doing this, and I always do that. If that describes you, you're a candidate for a spirit detox today, okay? 
How long must I wrestle with my thoughts? How long does the wrestling match with my thoughts go on? And how long will I have sorrow in my heart? If you're wrestling with a heart of sorrow, you are a candidate for a spirit detox today. How long will my enemy triumph over me? This is King David again. This is a guy leading God's people, the man after God's own heart who went through a wrestling match and had some things in his spirit that shouldn't have been there and had to kind of go through a process to get some of the contaminants out and make his spirit right again. So if that's, if that's where we're at today, we're going to detox this. Well, what do you do about that? How do we, what, what's the prescription for, for a spirit detox, right? Let's go to Romans chapter 8. I love this portion of scripture, but you can't really appreciate it if you don't know Romans chapter 7. I don't have time to read Romans chapter 7 to you, so let me explain. You can read it on your own, maybe later. In Romans chapter 7, Paul explains himself the wrestling match that David kind of was explaining. He says, the very thing I want to do, that I don't do. And the things I don't want to do, that's what I keep on doing. And he's explaining like the tension of him, like that we all wrestle with. Every one of us have wrestled with this from time to time, you guys. And he ends chapter 7, he goes, oh, what a wretched man am I. Who's going to save me from this body of death? And he kind of ends it there like chapter 7 ends with, dang, I'm in trouble, man. I just don't know what to do with the wrestling match inside of me. And then chapter 8 comes in as the prescription, and it's what I want to deliver to you today, the prescription for a spirit detox. Okay, Romans chapter 8, start to verse 5. Those who live according to the sinful nature, here's what the problem is, he says, they have their minds set on what that nature desires, which means if you're going to have an effective detox process, then we need to have a plan to get some different stuff going in and different stuff going out, okay? But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. So I'm going to give you some help on that today, okay? That dynamic going on in your life. The mind of the sinful man is death, which a lot of us have already experienced, or you're on that. You're like, man, this, ain't, this thing ain't, ain't working, right? He says this, but the mind controlled by the Spirit is life in peace. That's what God wants for you. That's what I want for you. Therefore, brothers, we have an obligation. Another way to say that is there's something we should probably do about that if we got this thing going on. We got an obligation to respond to this, not to the simple nature, to live according to it. For if you live according to the simple nature, you will die. But if by the Spirit you detox, you go through your life and you find the areas of contamination and you one by one get them out, you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Okay, how do we, so today we're going to talk about this toxic spirit. We need to detox our spirit on a regular basis, you guys. On a, just like you, you, we need to clean our physical bodies, we need to get rid of the toxins that are poisoning us and preventing us from living the life that God always intended for us. So here's what I want to do. There are some things that you need to get out and some things you need to put in, okay? If, you're, if, if your spirit's got some poison, some toxic inside of it, it's probably because one of these three things, I'm going to show you three things that you need to get out, man. And then there's three things. If your spirit man is going to come back to the place of dominance, of strength in your whole self, then there is three things that you need to start feeding your spirit if you want to make it strong again. This week, we're going to take out three things, and next week, we're going to do another three, okay? So here they are. If you want a spirit detox, here, here it is. Number one, you got to remove this. You got to remove doubt from your life. You got to remove that. Some of you don't even realize how much doubt has gotten into your life, and I'm not just talking about the occasional, I mean, doubting is normal. We're all going to doubt, but some of you are living in remaining in doubt. You are, you are staying in that place. You know what doubt is? Doubt is believing what the world thinks about something. It gets, it gets away from God's reality to earth's reality. Doubt is the single greatest enemy of confidence. It, it limits your potential. It, it causes procrastination. You're not doing what you know you should be doing because you are doubting God in an area. It causes you to miss God's best for your life. James chapter 1, verse 6 says, whoever doubts is like a wave in the sea just tossed back and forth that's driven and blown about by the wind. See, when you doubt, you let your circumstances, the waves of life are controlling where you're going and what you're doing instead of God. That's what doubt does. Joshua chapter 1, verse 9, be bold and courageous. I love this. Banish fear and doubt. You need to get rid of that stuff. For remember the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. 
So here's how it plays out for me. I'm like, oh my goodness. I'm watching the news and I'm like, this, this world is falling apart, man. This, it's, it's, it's killings and division and slipping culture. And I'm like, my God, do you see this, Lord? What are you going to do about it? And we forget so easily, man, we're the head, not the tail. Like I'm above it, not beneath it. My God is king over the earth. And God has a different reality than what we see. And if you're not careful, you get sucked into doubt and it'll get inside of you. And I'm not saying denying that any of that stuff exists, but we just got to get more in tune with God's reality than earth's reality and the reality of this world, okay? Write it down this way. We got to trust what God says. If we're going to get out of doubt, we got to trust what God says, not what the world says. We got to get in tune with his word, with God, and get out of doubt. Here's a great verse, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, on your own reasoning. We got to detox doubt. And I'm going to show you how in just a second. Here's the second thing, though, that I'm convinced. If our spirits are going to come more alive, we got to get this thing out of our life. Number two is negativity. Oh, my goodness. Just negativity, man. Some of you are like, it's already so hot, man. It's, and you're already complaining about the future hot. You're like, it's going to be 100 soon. And then just a few weeks ago, you're like, it's raining again, man. It's so cold. <laughs> There's ice on my windshield. And you're just, yeah, how many, remember Winnie the Pooh? Some of you got the Eeyore spirit inside. If you got the spirit of Eeyore, it's like, I don't know, it looks like it's going to rain today. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he comes in walking around all depressed. Some of y'all need the Tigger attitude. You remember Tigger? Yeah. Tigger. <laughs> I know it's our cartoon, but I'm sorry. The wonderful things about Tigger is Tigger's a wonderful thing, right? Amen. His top is made out of rubber. His bottom is made out of... There you go. Some of you know what I'm talking about. And the most wonderful things about Tigger is Tigger's a wonderful thing. Come on, he's just got this attitude of just like, man. And he, he, this is so cool because Winnie's, Winnie the Pooh's all nervous all the time. Piglet's all nervous. Eeyore's all depressed and dark and stuff like that. And Tigger comes in and he's like, what are we doing today, guys? And they're all, we're going to go pick some apples. And he's like, that's great. That's the, what Tiggers do best. <laughs> right? They're like, we're going to go ice skating. Tigger's like, that's great. That's what Tiggers do best. Come on, some of you need a spirit of Tigger inside of you. You know what I mean? <laughs> Negativity, man, can pollute your spirit. Sometimes it is the wrong mindset. But, but and here's the deal. Some of you guys, it's not a person. Negativity is not a personality. Some of you have, have owned a critical negative personality saying, and someone told you that. You are not your Enneagram number. You are who God says you are. Okay. I'm all cool with personality profiles because they help us discover a little bit about who we are. But you cannot attach yourself to any identity other than the identity of Christ. So stop saying, oh, that's just my personality. That's not God's personality for you. So stop accepting that, that negative mindset. That's not, that's not it, man. And sometimes it's not a mindset, though. Sometimes it's a wound. All right? So Proverbs chapter 18, verse 14, 14 says it like this. But a wounded spirit, he says, who can bear that? Like nobody can bear. If you have a wounded spirit, it will affect every area of your life. So some of you, you are critical and negative, not because it's your personality, but because you have an unhealed wound. And so we'll get to that in our toxic soul next week. We'll talk about that. But this is one of those areas where it has affected some of your spirits. Here's what we need to do. I'm going to give you two things for this. If I want to get this negativity out, I need to start thinking what God thinks. I need to replace some of my thoughts to get the toxin out. Isaiah chapter 26 says, you will keep in perfect peace, look at this, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. I got to get my thinking right. But I'm going to give you an extra fill in here, okay? Because not only you got to think God's thoughts, look at this. Write this down somewhere. I also got to say what God says, okay? I can't just like let it stay in my mind and meditate on things. I got to give birth to something, I got to speak with my vocabulary, with my language. I got to say what God says. Watch this. This is going to get all up in your business today. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 29. Check this out. Don't use foul or abusive language. That person who cut you off earlier or later on, let them. Stop cussing at them. All right, let them. Don't you. Let everything you say be good and helpful. Everything that you say be good 
and helpful. Some of you are like, I can't do that. But here, can you do it for six days? I'm just challenging you, like for six days, just, just everything, stop, stop doubting. Stop doubting God. Stop living in that thing. Man, you're going to think God's thoughts, and you're going to start saying what God says. Don't let the negativity out. Don't let the foul out. Just speak that which is good and helpful for building up others. Six days. I'm just challenging you to do this for six days, okay? The third one is obvious. This third toxin that we need to remove is sin. Anything sinful it, it pollutes our spirit man. And, and none of us gets the sin thing right, you guys. No, none of us are perfect. None of us, uh, in that word sin, it might throw a lot of people off. It might like, oh, you get all like, ooh, that feels like condemning to me. That's not how even God thinks about it. Please stop thinking about it that way. I've told you guys before, sin, in Greek, it's humertia. And all it means is to miss the mark. But check this out. Go with me on this. If that's what sin means, if sin, if sin just means miss the mark, then what, you know what that means? It means I'm aiming at the wrong target. So, so in order to remove this toxin from your life, this sin, I don't, I don't get all bent out of shape and focus on the condemnation of how bad I am and I'm sinning. No, all I need to do is re-aim. That's it. Just, just re-aim somewhere else. So, so I need to, I need to, I'm aiming at the wrong thing and I need to aim at the right thing, which is why, by the way, the right response to sin is a word called repent. And that's just another word that it just it doesn't it doesn't need to bring condemnation. Repent just means turn around. Because you're aiming, <laughs> you're aiming at the wrong thing. Turn around, change your direction. And that's why I write this down. If you're gonna detox, we need to turn to what God wants. Turn. Now I don't know what that is for you, but you know it. In fact, you're thinking of it right now. You don't need me to point out areas of sin and go, this is where you're sin and this is where you don't need that. What you need, it, it, you probably are, you already know it. Holy Spirit is revealing areas of your life where you need to redirect. You're, you're pointed at the wrong target, and you need to redirect. Look at Romans chapter 6, verse 13. Do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Instead, I love this, he says, give yourselves completely to God. So it's just not enough to detox. I studied the detox process. It's not enough to get the, the, the contaminants out, the poisonous contaminants out. You have to actually put good nutrients in. So you can't just remove the bad. You got to put in some good. And I'm asking you to put God's word to the test for six days. No doubt. I'm just going to believe what God says about it. I'm not going to buy into the world's philosophy. I don't care how bad or bleak it is. I'm going to trust God. I'm not going to let anything into my mind or off my lips that is negative. I'm going to re-aim my life. I've just been off target a little bit, and I'm going to replace them. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 4 with me. He says, discipline yourselves for the purpose of godliness. It's going to take some discipline, man, to get this thing on track, to remove these things. Keeping yourselves, I love this word, spiritually fit. You're going to have to get in fit. You're going to have to get in shape, spiritual shape, okay? For physical training is of some value. That's good to get your body all in shape. Yeah, that's some value, man. That's going to affect all the others. But godliness, spiritual training is of value in everything and in every way since it holds promise for the present life and for the life to come. So we need to get our spirit man back in charge. We need to bring some health back to our, our spirit man. And, it, and, and so these are, I'm going to give you three things that in order for your spirit man, for the, the deepest part of you to become strong, stronger than the others, become the place of dominance again in your whole self, you need to feed your spirit man these three things. And, then, and it's like, you can't just watch other people. Don't wait for me to come and bring you. Here's the first one. The first thing you need is God's word. You need to feed your spirit the word of God. I'm going to feed myself God's word. Because if we're going to believe what God believes, say what God says, think what God thinks, you got to get into the word. There is no way that you can get God's thoughts except from the Bible. you got to get into your word. And really what the Bible does is, re, what it needs to do is reprogram some of your minds. It's going to reprogram you a little bit too, to God's reality because we serve this nothing is impossible kind of God, and he needs to reprogram your mind. Matthew 4, 4 says this, man shall not live and be upheld and sustained by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And, and if you don't believe it, you may say, try it for six days where you, you get these toxins out, the news, the games, the negativity in your mind, and you just feed yourselves God's word and just watch what happens. 
Psalm chapter 1 says it like this. Happy are those who reject the advice of evil men. Instead, they find their joy in obeying the law of the Lord, and they study it day and night. So look, I'm not asking you for the rest of your life. I'm just saying put it to the test. For six days, go on a spirit detox and replace that thing. So here's how it's going to play out for me. Um, the worst source of discouragement and doubt for me is the news. Watching it, listening to it, reading it. So what I'm going to do for the next six days is I'm going to not listen, watch, or read the news. And I'm going to focus on the word of God more in my life. So here's what for you, I put a blank in there. I will, in your notes, I will blank. I want you to jot down. You don't have to jot down mine, but I want you to jot down. Here's what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get God's word in my life. It could be a psalm every day, a proverb every day. I'm going to do it every morning, every night, whatever that is. Maybe you're going to do what I like to encourage here at Discovery. I like to encourage people to do the one-year Bible reading plan. You can find it on, on the Bible app. Um, it gives you a little bit of the Old Testament, a little bit of the New Testament, uh, a little bit of the psalm and proverb as well. And it's just like 15 minutes a day. If you got 15 minutes, you can read through the entire Bible in one year. But I'm going to get God's word. And I'm not, again, asking for the rest of your life. I'm just asking for six days of detoxing yourself. That you're not going to wait for next Sunday for me to feed you the word. You're going to feed yourself the word. Okay? You're not going to wait to go on YouTube and watch somebody else get their dose of the word. No, you got to exercise yourself. How many of you, when you exercise physically, you, you, you sit down on the couch with a donut and turn on someone else working out? Y'all are here, man. I need to get in shape here. And you sit down and you just watch them working out. Man, that looks hard. I feel better already. No. You, you got to get God's word inside of you, man. Don't just be spoon-fed. You got to go through spiritual training, spiritual fitness. And I'm just, I'm just telling you to test it because some of you, your thoughts and your emotions and your, your, your body's appetites and your carnal appetites are pushing you around through your life. And you got the wrestling match of I would want to and I really would want to, but I keep doing this and saying this and thinking that and going there. And the reason why is because your spirit, man, is so anemic. You come in here thinking I'm going to feed you the word of God, or you go on YouTube, and you don't know the word of God for yourself, if you are going to get your spirit man back in charge, you better feed yourself, okay? This, I'm just trying to help you guys out to go on this detox experience. We need to get in the word for six days, six days, every day, get into God's word. Here's the second prescription, and that is I'm going to feed myself God's word, and then I'm going to feed myself worship. Somebody say worship. I'm specifically talking about worship music here, okay? Some of you might think I'm a little bit strange, and I probably am. I get that. But I made a decision a long time ago that I was not going to listen to music that did not glorify God, okay? And, and I know it sounds extreme and weird. I'm not putting that on you. But I just, I just realized, at some point, I realized the effect it was having on my mind, on my emotions, on my, uh, on, on my responses and reactions, that I was letting something that was not of his kingdom influencing me, or, or I'll use the word today, contaminate. Some, I was letting some toxins and things that were not of the kingdom of God into my life. And I'm not put on you, but I'm just, I'm going to challenge you for the next six days. Here's my challenge. What if you didn't allow the secular in your mind, specifically in the form of music, and instead you filled that time with worship and praise? You cut all that. I'm telling you, you would, you'd feel a detox. you feel like the withdrawal vex. You'd be like, uh, twitching and stuff. You'd feel. You'd feel because you're like, about around the fourth day, though, you're going to start saying, this is changing my life. This is changing. And here's the deal. You probably won't even realize this right now because your mind is being wired differently. But after you get out of it and rewire about the fourth day, you're going to see that the thoughts you're thinking, the feelings you're having are so far away from what you had four days ago, okay? Because this stuff is programming you. What you're putting in is coming out, okay? So, so what, how do you get the spirit man strong? You stop feeding that. You got to starve that, that, the doubt, the negativity, the sin. And I got to feed myself God's word. I got to feed myself worship. Here's how Philippians chapter four describes it. Fix your thoughts on what is true, what is honorable, what is right, 
pure, lovely, and admirable. Think about these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. And I'm promising you, look what he says. Then the God of peace will be with you. That you will experience a peace that no pill can give you. I'm telling you, God's offering a closeness with you. But he's saying, touch no unclean thing. Come out from them. Be separate. And I'm going to dwell within you. You can have as much of God as you want. If you come out and make room. Come out. Make some room there. Make some room in your music. Make some room in your time. Make some room. Is this too challenging for you guys? Are you all okay? All right. Come on, breathe with me. It's going to be okay, all right? Just remember, okay? We got, we got to get this detox going on. So here's the blank for you. I will, there's another blank. I will what? And you don't have to do mine, but I am going to challenge you. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to reduce the amount of secular, and I'm going to get more of the spiritual. I'm going to reduce the media input that I'm getting. I'm just going to replace that. I'm going to get into God's. I'm going to worship him every day. I'm going to not wait for an experience that someone puts on for me. I'm going to exercise worship from within me, from within my spirit. I'm not saying we're not exercising it together in here, but I'm saying it's different when you manifest it yourself, okay? I'm going to, I'm going to worship. Um, and the last one, last one is prayer. The three things that you need to feed your spirit, that you need to starve some things, get the doubt, get the negativity, get the sin, re-aim, whatever it is, whatever. But you, you need to feed yourself the word of God, worship, in prayer, and I understand that we're all at different stages in our walk with Christ, and some of you may be doing this, some of you may not be doing it consistently, and I'm challenging you for six days to get away. Some of you might be doing these things, but you're not starving the other things. You still got doubt and negativity and other areas of input that are contaminating you, and I'm saying cut that stuff off and dive deeper into his word, his, wor- his presence in worship and prayer, and just see for six days what God will do. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 says, for if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays. He's talking about like a heavenly language that God has given us in prayer that he can, like we can pray in a heavenly language. But my mind is unfruitful though when I do that. So what shall I do? Well, I'm going to pray in my spirit, but I also pray with my understanding. I'm going to sing with my spirit, but I also have to sing with my understanding. So so here's what I want to challenge you to do. When you're praying this week for six days, you're going to read God's word every day. Worship God every day. You're going to pray every day. Don't just pray in your mind. Pray with your voice, with your understanding, okay? God gave you this for a reason, okay? He wants you to use your voice when you pray. I know he knows your thoughts, but he wants you to use your voice when you pray. So let me give you really quickly. I didn't have time to put it in your notes or anything, but in, in, in the Lord's Prayer where he teaches us how to pray, there's five steps. Let me just give you five steps of how you can pray effectively. Some of you may like, what what's... Give me some steps. Give me the process, how I can have a good time with God, have a prayer time with God. Let me give them to you. You might want to write some extra notes. Step one is adoration. Adoration. Jesus said, this is how you should pray. And he begins, hallowed be your name. It's what we did today. We exalt your name above the earth. Magnify your name. You spend the first time of prayer is exalting with your mouth, not your mind, with your mouth, who God is declaring who he is, thanking him, worshiping him. That's where we start. Step two is consecration. Jesus continues and he says, your kingdom come, your will be done. This is where now I consecrate my whole self, my body, soul, and my spirit. That's when you wholly surrender yourself to God. Step three is supplication. He says, give us, pray like this, give us today our daily bread. That's where you express your immediate needs. God wants to know your needs. God wants to be the meter of your needs. Uh, and you're like, oh, no, I don't, I don't want to pray about that. That's just, usual. no, 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 God wants you. Daily bread? Daily bread? No, I can take care of that. No, God actually wants to be the one that you acknowledge is the provider of your daily bread. So when you have a moment, you say, God, help me with the meeting. Help me with, with my, my, my marriage. Help me. I, I'm going to make a decision. Help me with this decision. Help me with my, my employees. Help me with my boss. God, today I'm going to. The, and you're just, what you're doing is you're acknowledging and inviting him in. Daily bread. This is supplication. Step four is intercession. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Intercession is where we start to uh, uh, we stand before God on behalf of someone else. But we also need to make sure our hearts are pure. So we're asking forgiveness of ourselves and we're forgiving others and we're interceding on others' behalf. And then lastly, step five is protection. Where Jesus ends and he says, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
We're not exempt from trials, from spiritual warfare, and from temptation. And so God wants us to pray this way, that we would ask for his help as we put on the full armor of God. And listen to this. I'm telling you, in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, God almost dares you to pray. This is like, he says, if, I mean, man, they're probably not going to do it, man. He's like, but if my people, my god divine people respond by humbling themselves, praying, seeking my presence, and turning their backs on their wicked lives, I'll be there ready for you. Check this out. I'll listen from heaven, forgive their sins, and restore their toxic life back to health. God says, I'll make you have healthy again. If we have this concentrated focus on the presence of God, we're going through a spirit detox for the next six days. We're enrolling. We're checking ourselves in to a spirit detox center. We're all going to do it together. I'm doing it with you. I would love the privilege, the honor to take you on a journey of, of, of your whole self becoming well healthy, starting with the most important, intricate part of who you are, your spirit man. Hey, thank you for watching the Discovery Church YouTube channel. Don't stop here. Join the Discovery Online family every Sunday. Subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream event and share it with a friend. You can also support the ministry by clicking the give button to help us continue to reach people around the world for Jesus Christ. Thank you again for watching. Go love God, love each other, and change the world.